So uh, therefore, like, what, what impressed you about this study other than, yes, non-inferior, equal survival advantage with some trend that towards more superiority in regard to the lymphatinib. But what else was really impressed, uh, impressive to you from that study? So I think the secondary endpoints were also very um, impressive. So not only that it's a positive study, it's also um, the response rate, which was clearly higher um, than with uh, Sorafnib, specifically when we look at the embryocyst response rate, which goes up to 40%, which we have never seen before. Amazing. 40%, in, yeah, amazing. In, in, in yeah. systemic therapy. And even, I mean, this is getting close to, to the response rate we see with TACE and, and Y90. Yeah? So it's really impressive. Um, of course, PFS is also significantly longer, 3.8 to 7.4 months. Almost T double. Almost doubled, right? TTP, time to progression, is almost tripled. Um, so the secondary endpoints, they, they indicate that the drug is more active compared to serafinib. But what we also, of course, have to keep in mind that this did not really directly translate it in a significantly better overall survival. Yeah, so I think we, we have to be careful that we not overestimate the secondary endpoint. On the other hand, I mean, when we look at the activity of a drug, I think we, can, we also can't ignore them, right? And, um, so, and what Dr. Kudo just said, I mean, it's really amazing how many patients have been treated in Japan and that they see these early decrease in AFP and necrosis after two weeks. I mean, this is kind of an indication that this is really an um, active drug. And um, so I think this, these secondary endpoints are also something we need to keep in mind when we decide on which treatment it, we choose for our patients. I would say, yes, you're right, maybe secondary endpoints, but I cannot really but say, whoa, when it comes to the response rate. 40.9% in regard to modified resistance on the drug. That's really impressive. Dr. Kudu, you heard us probably, all of us are kind of like referring one way or the other is we're very impressed in regard to the secondary endpoints, which really showed impressive improvement in outcomes. What did not make the study being a superior study? In other words, despite the design was for non-inferiority, but why wouldn't even meet a superiority uh, cutoff in that study? What's your explanation? Yeah, there is uh, two reasons, I, th I think. The, the one, one reason is the post-trial treatment. So post-progression uh, survival is too long because of the post-trial uh, post post treatment, like uh, systemic therapy or... Whatever they got yes, after, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. So it is too long. So it, uh, the difference, the uh, hazard ratio was diluted because of the, the treatment. Another thing is uh, AFP imbalance. The covariate analysis showed, clearly showed the AFP, AFP was imbalanced uh, favoring solafinib. So, so if the, the, that uh, was uh, collected by covariant analysis, the significant difference was, uh, sh was re uh, demonstrated. So that means if it's uh, included in the, in the strat stratification factor, it might be the uh, uh, superior, superior results. So I think those two are the main re reason uh, the, that reflect trial did not show uh, superiority. This is very, very important. Uh, I, I definitely know that you paid attention to every word uh, Dr. Kudu has mentioned because this is really critical that the study, of course, because it's not or we cannot isolate it from what else patients should have been or could have been in regard to therapy. And as such, because we don't have control to what happened after the study, this could have very much influenced that non-inferiority, really not to show the superiority per se, but another component, as we just heard, in regard to the AFP level, which was actually in favor of the serafinib arm that really made it, uh, the, as such, a non-inferior study. But nonetheless, it does not really discredit the important outcomes that we spoke about with Dr. Vogel in regard to the improvement in PFS, TTP, and the response rate. And I would like to uh, touch on one more point in regard to lymphatinib, and we hear it from the expert. And Mastoshi, so tell us a little bit more. You mentioned in the beginning as you introduce uh, the, the, the concept of lymphatinib, but uh, uh, our experience has been the drug is rather very well tolerated. What's your experience in Japan and uh, what's your view on the adverse events? Yes, adverse events, uh, AE profile is different from uh, uh, sorafenib. So subjective AEs uh, like a hand of skin syndrome or diarrhea is a very uh, layer or less and uh, 
other, other AE profiles like hypertension, proteinuria, or hypothyroidism are, are more frequently. But uh, the patient do not uh, feel that kind of AE. So we, we have, to, of course, we physicians have to monitor, and we can manage easily. So uh, the AE, AE incidence uh, are about similar, uh, but uh, uh, subjective AE is uh, more uh, uh, much less in lembatinib arm. So, uh, lembatinib, lembatin. so it's very easy to manage. To manage. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see how it is. Uh, Richard, what do you think? Uh, the FDA will approve it? Yes, it met its end point, right? There's no reason it should not be approved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, we've been asking for another option for frontline for 10 years, uh, and now we have one, right? does not mean it automatically replaces serafinib. The overall endpoint was equivalent. But it's good to have another option for patients. I think that's very important. And there are some characteristics that favor one drug over the other. You know, you mentioned uh, hand-foot syndrome, toxicity. Uh, we see with hep C that maybe serafinib, you know, those patients do better. And that might have been another imbalance that, that caused some, some reason that it wasn't overtly positive in that there were more hep C patients in the serafinib arm and, and we have seen in other studies that hep C might be a group of patients who do better with serafinib. Uh, so it should be approved based on tolerability and efficacy. I totally agree with you. I would say probably the expectation is that will be approved in no time.